Hello and welcome to a new video and this is episode two of the three week mini cut series. So for those of you who have not seen episode one, I will put a link in the description so you can watch it after, watch them back to front, who cares? What we are doing is a three week shred. You know, everyone gets before a holiday and they panic, oh, I'm not in good shape, I don't look good enough, I'm not gonna look good on the beach, and they try and lose weight last second, and normally they just crash diet and doing whatever else. So we are going to do it sustainably. We've had one episode so far, so you're catching the series nice and early, uploading every three days. What I'm doing is trying not to make the videos too long, so like 30 minutes or 40 minutes i'm trying to just you know put a few tips in each episode so today's episode is going to cover eating out it's going to cover cardio and we're also going to go through some more of the workout split the three day a week split if you are new here, please like the video if you learn anything at all or find this remotely useful. If not, I probably should stop doing this. Um, and subscribe to the channel to keep updated with the series and see the next episode and learn for free. Day three, weigh in. So on day one, I was 177 pounds. We are now 173. 173, that is three days in a steady calorie deficit of 2,000 to 2,100 calories. So that's around sort of a five to 600 deficit per day. That is walking. To be fair, yesterday I had like 2,000 steps. In fact, let's review the week. Let's bring up the apps. So yesterday was around 2,000 steps. The day before that, absolutely smashed the steps. And apart from that, it's been pretty much bang average. So I am going to adjust my steps to, well, I want to say 15,000 a day, but I just don't know if that's realistic or not. Um, so minimum will be 10, ideally it will be at 15,000 per day. Here is also the calories for the last few days, just so you can see. And my protein level has been exactly where it needs to be. So day three physique check. I know I'm standing in the gym, but this is with no pump or anything like that. It's first thing in the morning. I've just literally woke up and done a weigh-in. First off, not flexed. shabby anyway let's crack on with the video crack on with the day show you what we're gonna do and let's keep getting them scales down and get ripped in three weeks a few hours of work down and a costa in the bag so all i've had today is a costa coffee like i said normally i would fast i'm gonna go more into fasting and etc on my next video as there's a lot more i want to put into this one that i feel is a little bit more important fasting is just a fantastic technique to make a calorie deficit nice and easy but like i said we'll come back to that in the next one however so we are now going to normally it would be lunchtime i'd normally you know make some food now get some protein in i'm probably going to hit a protein shake not something I usually go for while in a deficit, as I prefer to, you know, stay satisfied for longer. Uh, you know, eating food is going to keep you so much fuller than liquid calories. However, I need to hit low calories as I'm going out to eat tonight, which brings me on to my next subject. So eating out while getting shredded or losing weight. Can you do it? The answer is, of course you can. You can eat literally whatever you want. This is all I preach online. It doesn't matter, you know, carbs do not make you fat. Eating fats does not make you fat. Having oil in your dinner does not make you fat. Salt or sugar, salt? Sugar in your tea does not make you fat. All the rest of it is here. So what makes you put on weight is solely eating too much. No matter what you're eating, 
If you eat too many calories, you will put on weight. And that is simple as that. So what should you do when you are eating out? The number one thing I go for is base your meal around a protein source. So pick your meat, for example. If you're vegetarian or vegan, you know, you have to make it work. But I would personally go for like chicken or steak or, you know, some sort of protein source. After that, I would then build my carbs on the side. So, you know, ideally you don't go for the chips, but, you know, you can. It's like five, 600 calories, probably for a portion of chips. So I would go for like some sort of potato or whatever I want, sweet potato fries or whatever you're going to have um, as my next option. And then I'll just try and put some greens on the plate of some sort. Try not to go for like the pizza or the pasta or something that's going to be ridiculously calorie dense and like... 1500 to two and a half thousand calories something ridiculous aside from this just make it work in your day again this is where intermittent fasting comes in i really want to go into intermittent fasting but i'm conscious i don't want to make the video like 25 minutes long uh, so again it will be in the next video but um you know don't eat in the morning hold your calories off like personally for me i could eat a lunch now of like a small lunch like four five hundred calories but instead i think i'm just going to bang a protein shake about two three hundred get some protein in um and then eat you know without being restricted tonight you know i'm going to a really nice restaurant uh, i'm going to the ivy asia in mayfair i think it officially probably opens next week um so i'm i want to you know i want to eat when i'm there i don't want to be looking at the calories i don't want to be you know restricted in what i can have so instead i'm just going to have most of my majority of my 2000 calorie allowance in one meal okay so shake time if i'm honest there is absolutely no plan into this i've just pulled the load of random sh out of the freezer off the side and off the out of the fridge and again i mean this is this is actually a couple of days out of date but it's not going to kill me so i'm going to i'm going to put it in anyway um see some protein just want to say i'm in no way affiliated to this brand i don't even know if it's nice i've never tried it um what are the calories saying one seven hundred uh calories and 22 grams of protein that sounds decent I'll, I'll, I'll put two scoops into that but it's banana flavor so i might sack this off this blender is dead but you know i need to buy a new one but i just haven't okay so let's start out two scoops of protein one two Fucking got most of it over the side. Um, we've got some blueberries, a few of them. I'm not gonna weigh my blueberries, there's not many calories. Um, well, some crumbs of raspberry. Uh, some broccoli, because it's good to get green, that's way too good. Uh, like to get in the hole, that's what she said. Um, trouble fitting this in i might have to blend it and then uh and then push more into it oh i think i'm gonna have to when i said this blender was dead <laughs> overcome the problem just put some water in so there's some stuff to you know get involved and help fit and mix Oh, have you ever seen someone try so hard to mix, to mix a smoothie? We're getting somewhere. Come on. Okay, that took a whole lot longer than that should have taken. Let's see if it's actually blended or not. It looks it. It's pretty good to be fair for a bit of out of date spinach. It's just, well, it just sets up banana really from the protein powder, but yeah, it's decent. So on to cardio, a very misunderstood subject in the world of fitness i believe and especially when it comes to weight loss so a lot of people that want to lose weight they start going running randomly for no real apparent reason because they think they will lose weight and get in great shape from it so in order to lose weight as i went through in my last video if you haven't seen it i'll put a link in the bio um but if you are looking to lose weight you need to be in a calorie deficit if you are not in a calorie deficit you're not going to lose weight someone eating a thousand calories of oreos is going to lose more weight than someone eating three thousand calories of salad 
anyway so number one you need to be in a deficit if you're not there's no point going running etc the reason people carry out cardio is to just bigger that deficit so say if your maintenance calories are two and a half thousand you're eating two thousand every day you know that's 500 loss uh, a day three and a half thousand a week which is about a pound a week loss to bigger that deficit people go for a run and burn an additional you know, three four hundred calories whatever it may be depending on how long you're running however if you are already in an energy deficit, your body has a need to refuel. It want, your body's a survival mechanism and wants to maintain where it currently is and maintain your energy levels and etc. and stay alive. So your cravings are going to increase. Your body's need to refuel is going to increase. Throwing intense cardio on top of that is just gonna make this an all round, absolutely miserable experience for you. Instead, I would just go low intensity. If you want, really want to bigger that deficit and lose some more weight, then just walk. You'll be so surprised. If you just walk literally 10, 15,000 if possible steps a day, you will see huge, huge differences very quickly without sending your cravings absolutely through the roof. Not only this, but also when you're carrying out intense training with your weightlifting or whether you're doing intense cardio, your fat cells does not offer enough energy to support that level of training. So you're actually just using a whole lot of muscle and burning a lot of energy from your muscle in cutting, running or whatever intense cardio you're doing. However, if you just keep it low intensity, walk, get the steps in, your cravings will stay at bay, you'll burn additional calories at a decent rate, and you also just help to burn and use fat. Another prime example of this is I was in America literally two weeks ago. I went to Orlando and LA. As you can imagine, I ate a shit ton of food and I didn't really gain any weight. The only reason I didn't gain any weight, because I was eating a lot, was because I just walked everywhere. I was doing like 20,000 steps a day on average. You know, a lot of people say, I don't have time to walk. Oh, I can't fit that in. I've got a busy life. We all have busy lives. Uh, so it's just making time. Get up a little bit earlier. Rather than driving to the train station to get to work, walk. Rather than driving to the shops, walk. It's just making them tiny little conscious efforts to just make it happen. Wherever it's your lunch break, go for a walk. If you've got a dog, take it out more. Whatever you do, you just need to fit those steps in. <laughs> so we are going out for dinner in a couple of hours, but that protein shake did not hit the spot and I'm starting to get hungry. So, so I'm going to have a few of these. I'll try and limit myself for dessert later. On to the second gym session of the series. So we had first off incline dumbbell rows. Alternative movements could be a bent over barbell row or a cable row or a proper machine row. I much prefer dumbbells as I feel with a barbell, you are too locked in place. However, dumbbells can be a little tricky to set up at times. So anyway, some form tips, keep your arms close by your sides if you're looking to bias your lats. If you're looking to bias more your upper back, have your elbows slightly more flared out. Next, focus on fully lengthening and shortening your back muscles. When you're pulling from the bottom of the movement, you want to focus on more retracting your scapula and then pulling back with your back as much as you can and following through with the elbows rather than just lifting with your biceps. Last tip, just keep your chest up and back neutral. Okay, next we are setting up for a single arm lat pull down. I didn't actually incorporate this movement not too long ago, but it has blown my back up massively. Tip time. First of all is going to be your torso positioning. You want to be on the edge of the bench in a seated position. You do not want to be leaning back like a normal row. You want to be slightly lent forward or upright. To better bias the lat opposed to any of the upper back, keep your arm nice and tight till your torso. Focus on your pulling path here and make sure you are fully lengthening and then shortening the lats. Next up, we hit some legs. The first exercise being squats. Top tips on squats. First of all, keep your core nice and tight and your chest up. There is always this famous argument on depth and how far you should go down, whether it's arse to grass or not. This very much depends on your personal mobility. You should go down to the bottom depth that you can keep a neutral spine. The lower back should not round off. If this is your max, then this is your max. 
Next up, we hit some RDLs. Top tips for RDLs. Keep your legs straight if you want to buy us more of the hamstrings. Have a slight bend in the knees if you want to buy us more of the glutes. Top tip for RDLs, do not just bend over. Push your hips back and act like you're trying to get your bum to the back wall. Keep your chest up, but lower your chest at the same rate you're pushing your hips back. When your hips cannot go any further, you should not bend down any further. All you're going to do is put strain on your lower back. Then thrust forward and keep this purely a hip movement. Finished off with a little bit of quad movement. Same rules apply with the form. This wasn't really a full working set. I just smashed out some pull-ups till failure. Keep them back bias, neutral spine, slight lean back, pulling the chest to the bar, imitating a rowing movement rather than it all being on your biceps. So that brings us to the end of this video. I'm going to cut it off before it becomes ridiculously long and we'll go again in three more days with brand new tips and exactly what I'm doing to get in the best shape of my life in three short weeks. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys who watch it all the way to the end. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.